oh, it turns out that Sam Shamoon, whatever his name is, has gone full-on Roman Catholic and is now defending the heathen Greco-Roman practice of Mary worship, which actually was borrowed from the Greco-Roman Egyptian worship of Isis, the, the Egyptian god Isis, and carried on and influenced the Catholic worship of Mary. And yes, they are worshipping her. They can deny it all they want, but they are worshipping her by scriptural standards. But it's pretty insane how a supposed defender of you know Christianity, of course he defends the, the heathen Greco-Roman trinity, which is already a huge problem. The trinity which comes from Roman Catholicism, which has absolutely no basis in scripture. I mean, not one time does the word trinity appear in scripture. The word Godhead appears three times in the scriptures. Acts 17.29, Romans 1.20, and Colossians 2.9. Okay, the word Godhead is a scriptural term. And it's not, I, I, could go, I could go for a while about that, but the bottom line is he does not defend a scriptural Godhead. He, he defends the heathen Roman Catholic Greco-Roman uh, Trinity doctrine. But here, uh, he, he has two videos. One of them is he's actually defending uh, the, the Roman Catholic heresy that Mary was sinless, which is ridiculous and, and wicked because a complete denial of what, what uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 3 verses 10 to 18. But I'm going to play these two clips and go through some scriptures that totally refute what he's saying. And just kind of a warning to the Mark and avoid this Sam, Sham, Sam Shamoon. Can't say his name properly. And quite frankly, I don't care. But uh, he's just he's just a papist. He's just gone on full on Roman Catholic. So let's uh, start. Let's get into this refutation and also somewhat warning too. Okay. So let me address this objection that I hear all the time. Now, here's what I want to say. You don't have to agree with this view of Mary's perpetual sinlessness. You don't want to accept it? Okay. Okay, now listen to what I'm about to tell you, though. If you don't believe that Mary was kept sinless by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's between you and God. Do not come to my channel. Attack anyone else. Attack us for believing that. Quote, um attack you for believing that. Well, you're teaching a Roman Catholic heresy, a Roman Catholic lie. And it's not, oh, we can just agree to disagree. Um, only God is holy and sinless. Okay? Revelation 15, 4 is clear. You know, it says that thou art the only one that is holy, referring to God. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 2 also talks about that as well. Only God is sinless and holy. And Jesus Christ is God, by the way. Contrary to all you heathen Roman Catholic Trinitarians out there. But basically, Yes, it is an issue to, to attack people on, because you're promoting this. You're going to lead people astray and get them to start praying to a, a Babylonian goddess, the Queen of Heaven, which is who Roman Catholics worship. It is it is not just a light matter, saying that, oh, Mary was sinless, who cares? It's uh, somewhat blasphemous, too, because, again, what does Revelation 15, 4 say? Thou art the only one that is holy. Okay? And, and, and by the way, show me in Scripture where Jesus Christ preserved Mary sinless. You won't find that in Scripture. You'll only find that in Roman Catholic traditions of men. Putting verses that you think we've never heard, we've never addressed. We even have sessions on my YouTube channel. I brought William Albrecht and I also brought Father Kappas, thoroughly addressing the common objections against this teaching and making a case biblically and historically. If you're not convinced by their arguments... You see, notice I said historically, because... When Catholics can't handle scripture, they have to run back to the church traditions and church fathers. And what do the early Christians believe? Believe me, I've gone back and forth with Catholics numerous times on Instagram. And all the time, they won't deal with scripture. They always say, well, show me where the early church believe that. Or show me where the early Christians believe that. You see, they do not hold scripture as their sole standard. They hold scripture as it is a, a standard, but we want to see what the church tradition says. Because by their logic, if something's older, that somehow makes it authoritative. But you see how he said, oh, history and tradition. Bible-believing Christians don't care about what, if you're saved, okay, I'm not saying you cannot look at what early Christians say, but don't use that to determine your doctrine, because scripture should be your final standard, not what the early church says. If the early church says something contrary to scripture, guess what? The early church is wrong. You know, oh no, that's so offensive, I shouldn't say that. They're wrong. Okay, if they say something, if the early church did believe in the Trinity and did believe in Mary worship, they were wrong. Plain and simple, because scripture teaches against it. I'm sure that's going to make plenty of Catholics very happy, but Scripture is the final standard, not uh, man's philosophy or man's tradition or man's writings. That's okay. That's between you and the Lord Jesus. That's between you and the Lord Jesus. So here's what I'm asking you not to do. 
disagree with us, don't come to my channel, attack, mock, slander, pretending that you are knowledgeable of the Bible, that you're going to bring up some arguments that we've never heard before or addressed. And then in your arrogance, think that you're doing Christ a favor. And then when I call you out to debate me, then you play the victim. It's not going to work with um, me. You should read what the Bible says about debate. Okay. Oh, you, I'll call you out to debate me. Um, work of the flesh. Let me show you that. Uh, debating. I'll show you that. Romans chapter 1. Because you see, when people who just build their whole ministry off debating and arguing, they're proving they have a reprobate mind. Let me show you that. Uh, Romans chapter one verse twenty eight, even as they do like not like as even as they do not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, and it lists a bunch of sins there, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God goes down, but it describes the attributes of a reprobate. Debate. Let's look up the references in Scripture of the word debate and see what the Bible says about the, so that the word debate appears four times in scripture. First time is in Proverbs 20, 25 verse 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Okay. Second reference, Isaiah chapter 27 verse 8. In measure when it shooteth forth that will debate with it. So you see debating is often, you know, kind of almost like an argument. But then look at this. Behold ye, behold ye fast for a strife and debate and to smite it with the fist full of wickedness, fist of wickedness, and ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice be heard on high. That's Isaiah 58 verse 4. So now you see a debate being lumped in with strife. Okay, now let's go to the word debates. Another example of the word being associated with strife. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 20. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strife, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and he lists a bunch of sins there. But then he basically is like worrying about them because this is what's going on there. But debating is not a good thing. Debating is, is associated with strife and contention. So when you build your whole ministry off debating, that's kind of a big problem because you're basically sinning. But I'm going to show you the next video where he is defending the Roman Catholic lie that uh, Mary is the mother of God. Oh, yeah, yeah, one more thing I want to say on this thing of Mary being sinless. Um, was it Romans? Again, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 18. It says that nobody is righteous. Nobody is holy. Nobody is, you know, there's none that doeth good. No, not one. doesn't exclude Mary. So it kind of debunks the whole argument there. But, and also, I have written my notes as well, that in John chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, you do see an example of Jesus Christ correcting Mary and almost rebuking Mary. So, she was not perfect. She still had her flaws. But now I'm going to show this clip of him defending the Roman Catholic heresy that Mary is the mother of God. Let's do it. Let's do it, folks. Uh, Reno, who told you she's not a creation of God? Are you really sick and challenged to think that when you say she's the mother of God, it means she's eternal? Are you, honestly, guys, seriously, what an embarrassment. What an embarrassment, the level of ignorance, stupidity, and illiteracy. Who says that calling her the mother of God, the mother of God, somehow implies she's not a creature? Do you understand? By the way, does anyone understand? What uh, when you call her the mother of God, you are implying that she is eternal. Because if she's the mother of God, she would have to exist before God. I know Catholics will have make all these different arguments. Oh, no, we don't believe that. That's what it comes down to. Roman Catholicism uh, venerates and worships Mary. They do worship her. But there he is defending the lie that Mary is the mother of God. And I'm going to show you a quick verse of scripture that debunks that. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. Go there in the King James Bibles. John chapter 1, verses... 14 to 17. Good scripture to use against the Roman Catholics. Uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hmm. Jesus Christ is the one full of grace and truth, not, not Mary. And John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is per preferred before me, for he is for he was before me, and, and of his fullness we have all received, 
and grace for grace. Again, his grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Mary. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So your, so your Hail Mary full of grace prayer doesn't really work there. But written in my notes that um, Mary is not the one full of grace. Only Jesus Christ is full of grace. Grace comes from Jesus Christ, as we saw in verse 17. Mary was, a, was still a sinner that needed a Savior. You can see that in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and 47. She called God her Savior. And Jesus reproved the very first Catholic woman who tried to worship Mary. And that is in Luke chapter 11, verses 27 to 28. Turn there if you have a King James Bible. Luke chapter 11, verses was it 27 and 28. I've, I don't have the best memory, so I have to often write stuff down. Uh, and it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps that thou hast sucked. So you got the very first Roman Catholic here. But look at Jesus' response. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Exactly. You're more blessed if you keep the word of God and keep it. Or keep hear the word of God and keep it. Sorry. But you got Jesus there rebuking the very first Roman Catholic out there. So I just want to show you guys that Sam Sam, Sam Shamoon can't I can never see his name properly has just go on full on papist and Roman Catholic. So uh, Mark and Avoid uh, he is a false prophet. He's a heretic and he's defending the uh, Roman Catholic heathen Greco Roman Trinity. And the Trinity is not the scriptural Godhead. The biblical Godhead is body, soul, and spirit. God man is made in the image of God. You can see that in First Thessalonians chapter five verse twenty three. Man has a body, soul, and sp sorry. Man is made in the image of God. That, that is in Genesis chapter one verse twenty six and twenty seven. And a man has a body, soul, and spirit according to First Thessalonians chapter five verses twenty three. See my, again, my memory is not the best. So man's made the image of likeness of God, and man has a body, soul, and spirit. Well, same with God. Jesus Christ is the body, the Father is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Three in one, as per 1 John 5, 7. And there's also four times the word person is used in reference to God. That is in Job 13 verses, or Job, Job chapter 13 verses 7 to 8, Matthew chapter 27 verse 24, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10, and Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. All four times say the word person singular, never persons plural in reference to the Godhead. So don't, don't be deceived by the Trinity. Uh, it is pagan. Don't be deceived by this Roman Catholic Mary worship. It's also a uh, Greco-Roman heathen practice that was borrowed, that Roman Catholics just borrowed and, and adopted. And uh, don't be deceived by this false prophet Sam Shimon. He may have some stuff on Islam, but Roman Catholicism is equally as, as wicked and satanic and heathen as Islam. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.